I hope you can see the presentation right now. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Nicole already said about the association, and it is my fault that I didn't communicate this with Balash, but I hope in just one minute to say a couple of words about uh, about this enterprise uh, we started uh, several days ago, and it's because it's now official, namely uh, the association itself uh, intends to encompass a wide variety of researchers dealing with uh, the history of the Golden Horde and the Turkic Tatar states in Eastern Europe, but also all those interested or professionally dealing with the relations between the Mongols in general in Europe. So uh, here you can see the website, which is still uh, updated and the mail for for the contact and just to say the association will function internationally through several branches and the european section is also open to researchers from uh, eastern asia or australia or united states so far uh, we have put everything under the european section and uh, if you're interested to join i hope we will be in touch and then um, i can give you more details uh, so far, uh, we can say that the first big meeting uh, will be in 2022 in Kazan uh, at the regular inter international forum organized by Institute Marjani of Kazan. So much for uh, for this. Now I will turn to, um, well, uh, the topic of my presentation since I already spent some time. Uh, I have to say first that I will not deal in detail uh, with the complex relations between the Kingdom of Hungary and the Golden Horde. And the second, due to the same reason that is limited time, I will leave aside internal organization of the Western lands of the Golden Horde that constitutes lands or ulus of uh, Nogai, or if you wish, the right wing of the Golden Horde. Therefore, uh, I will just focus on some neglected aspects in Nogai's turbulent relations with Hungary and nature of their mutual conflict, conflict which uh, took place in the last three decades of the uh, 13th century. Um, as you all know, uh, Nogi was a member of side branch of the Juchit family, a great grandson of Juchi, a man who is usually considered the gray eminence or even king maker or khan maker of the Golden Horde, which is one of the most common misconceptions uh, in the 13th century history of the Juchits or the Golden Horde. Namely, the only regime change which Nogi instigated was the overthrow of Tulabuka and the enthronement of Tokta in uh, 1291. And there is no need to underline that it was a bitter irony that Tokta's rise to power signaled the uh, Nogai's downfall and death some eight years later. So uh, Nogai, we know he was a Baylor Bay in the beginning of his career. And after the enthronement of Manki Timur in 1267, he be became a commander of the Western or right wing of the Golden Horde, which encompassed the lands to the uh, west of the Dnieper River. Uh, after the death of Menke Timur in 1282, he's attested for the first time as Akka, or the elder, the oldest member of the Juchid lineage, and he was approximately 45 at that time. So here it is said that Nogi's establishment took place between 1267 and 1270, and the time frame is provided by two important events. One is already mentioned, the establishment of Menke Timur as a Khan of the Golden Horde, in fact. The first ruler uh, who, for whom we are certain that he bore the title of, of Khan. Uh, and we know that Menke Timur sponsored Nogi's transfer to the West, which is attested by Rashid al Din, by Bar, by, by, by Bar Salman Suri, and also by Greek historian Pachymeris. And uh, the time frame uh, can also be limited mm -hmm. by the beginnings of Nogi's correspondence with Mahmud Sultan by Bar Sal Bundukdari which took place in the month of Muharram 669, which is August or September 1270. And at that time, Nogai was for the first time attested as the ruler of the Western uh, parts of the Golden Horde. So uh, from that point until his death in late 1299, he played a crucial role in the history of Central and Southeastern Europe. Uh, the fact which we, we are all familiar with. Uh, so, so much about the introductory note. Uh, um, I started with this because the first indication of the change of, uh, on the Hungarian Tatar borders and fragile peace uh, that existed in the past decades is uh, preserved exactly at that time, although in, uh, in a corpse of sources uh, that uh, provide uh, much enigma. So uh, for the first time, the Hungarian Tatar clashes are attested in several Western sources, and the most important is this uh, 
short notice by anonymous minorities from Erfurt with obvious mistakes, uh, which said uh, that uh, King Bela IV died in 12th century, which is correct, and the Tatar slash his brother, uh, Stephen, of course, it's not his brother, it's uh, his, uh, his son and successor. And uh, the detail mentioned here that many thousands of Hungarians uh, died and uh, perished in this conflict is obviously exaggerated, but uh, these words are not unfounded considering that they are corroborated first by a garbled passage in uh, the annals of Piacenza, in which it was stated that Subano 1271, the great Khan and the emperor of the Tatars, uh, is the enemy of the Hungarian king. And probably the emperor of the Tatars is rather Monkey Temur than uh, Kubilai. And another evidence that is preserved is in, the, in one letter of Bohemian king, Otokar II, uh, where it is mentioned that the Tatar menace was one of the main reasons for the conclusion of peace between the Bohemian and Hungarian king in Pozhen, modern Bratislava, in the same year of 1271. And uh, what is more curious, the letter attests that both uh, Otakar II and Stephen V were threatened by the Tatars. So it is hardly a coincidence that these Tatar attacks and pressure on the Hungarian border coincided with Nogi's establishment in the West. But we are naturally not sure whether these uh, raids took place on Nogi's initiative or rather reflect uh, a more aggressive Tatar stance towards the Western powers uh, following the end of the Dilkanid conflict in Transcaucasia and the enthronement, enthronement of, uh, of Monk Temur. A uh, second important issue that can be omitted for these short presentations is related to the so called second Tatar invasion of Hungary which took place in the very beginning of 1285. Um, it is, as it is well known, massive incursion in Pannonia led by Nogai and Talabuga, the future Khan of the Golden Horde. And uh, for the purpose of saving your time, I will also meet the details and focus on some points which I consider the, the key points, but the points which are rather than neglected. First, um, uh, it is known uh, that it was the relations between the Hungarian king, Ladislas IV, and his Kuman subjects that served as a pretext for the Second Tatar invasion. Uh, yesterday, Konstantin Golev already touched the Kuman issue and the Kuman role in the relations between the Tatars and the Christendom, Hungary included, and I suspect that Professor Nikolov will also say a bit more, uh, including the Kuman settlement in Hungary, which is the fact why I will omit all these aspects. And uh, um, skip the events that followed the royal diet in Tatin near Buda in 1279, where uh, infamous Articuli Cumanorum were promulgated, forcing Cumans to abandon their old faith and uh, nomadic habits. Uh, eventually, the enforcement of these Cuman statutes prompted their rebellion, which was crashed at the banks of uh, Lake Hod, now non existent lake near Seged. And Hod, if I remember correctly, in Hungarian means beaver and uh, which took place in 1282. And the Kuman refugees who escaped from Hungary uh, found refuge among the Tatars and instigated them to invade Pannonia, at least according to 14th century Hungarian chronicles. Uh, but uh, it is the relations between the Kumans in Hungary and their, their compatriots that lived in Nogai's lands on the other side of Carpathians that deserves a short consideration. Namely, uh, according to the above mentioned source that is Hungarian uh, chronicles of the 14th century, it is known that Kumans in Hungary enjoyed support of certain Kuman leader, Oldemir, attested as uh, Dux Kumania, who with his force came to Hungary and participated obviously in the battle of, uh, of the Lake Hod. And uh, although uh, Oldemir was a Kuman leader to this of, of Carpathians, and although he must have been an August protege, his title Dux Kumani indicates that he enjoyed a certain degree of autonomy, which is probably not a coincidence and which uh, on, on which I will return at the end of this uh, presentation. And the second important point is that the second invasion coincided with the shortly restored Mongol unity uh, or Genghis unity. Namely, it was after the death of Monkey Timur that the Juchid showed readiness to formally submit to the authority of the great Khan Kubilai. And uh, there is a passage in Rashi Dalzin uh, work uh, which attests that uh, then Khan Tudamonke Kunishi, who was the ruler of the eastern branch of the Juchids, uh, Ordu's descendant, and Nogai, all three together sent their emissary to Kubilai in 1284. Uh, eventually, they did not appear at uh, the Kurultai as they promised, uh, considering that their ally Kaidu 
eventually refused to submit to Kubila and the civil war in the eastern parts of the Mongol Empire continued. But it is important to know that the expectations of uh, the unity of the Genghisid world in 1284 probably had a role in that idea of another uh, Tatar invasion to the heart of uh, Pannonia. Um, well, uh, according to the sources, uh, the attack was led by Nogai and uh, Tula Buka. However, some sources, uh, I already mentioned Rashid Abdin mentioned is only Nogai as the participant and the, and the leader of the campaign. And from other sources, we know that the campaign was supported by the contingents of the principalities of Western Rus, led by staunch Nogai Zalai, Lev Danilovich. The figures of the invading forces uh, in the sources are, as it is customary, completely unreliable. Uh, there, is alleged, there was allegedly 200,000 Tatars, according to a letter from a church prelate from Estragon. And according to Russian Hypatian Chronicle, some 100,000 Tatars died in the course of the campaign. Well, uh, what is certain, the magnitude of the second invasion, so-called second invasion, was not comparable to the invasion of 1241, 42. And the winter time chosen for the campaign was also not a coincidence, but a logical choice for the Tatar army as nomads are better equipped and prepared for winter campaigns. And uh, it is also not a coincidence that we see the same pattern uh, in the Tatar campaigns in Southeast Europe throughout the whole 13th and 14th century. And it was something that uh, particularly terrified most of the Byzantine contemporaries with one notable exclusion. John Cantacuzinos, who obviously learned from the Tatars that it is better to wage war during the winter time. Well, uh, the drastically smaller number of the attackers is probably one of the reasons which easily explains the relative unsuccess of the invasion as it is usually characterized in the historiography. But it was other factors such as a much better Hungarian defense uh, embodied in uh, stone castles. And uh, there is a great uh, research by Stephen Poe about the stone castles and their role in the in the first, the big uh, uh, Mongol invasion. And uh, here it needs to be said that there were relatively a uh, few Tatar attempts to capture fortified places in early 1285 at all. Uh, the only exception, a uh, notable exception, when I talk about fortified places, is certain Kastrum Turutsko, or probably Traskau in Western Transylvania, now in Romania. Uh, besides uh, the second, uh, um, important factor was the guerrilla actions of CK or secular militia in the Tatar rear guard. And then uh, we know about certain epidemics uh, that according to, well, uh, two Polish chronicles, but deriving from the same source and also a garbled passage in Biber Salman Suri uh, attests that epidemics kill both livestock and invaders. This is why I put anthrax uh, with the, the question mark, uh, this epidemic was noted even before uh, several years ago. So before we faced uh, this uh, this COVID COVID situation, um, by some um, our colleagues uh, in Russia, who were hasty to uh, conclude that it was probably plague. No, of course it was not a plague. We have very little information about the symptoms, but considering that both livestock and men suffered, my idea was that, 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 that it was probably anthrax or something similar. And I would be curious, of course, to know if any of the Hungarian historians or archaeologists uh, touched these topics, namely the role of the epidemics in the second Tatar invasion. But uh, I will return to the main issue here. Uh, the, the, the question remains whether the incursion of 1285 was attempt of conquest or rather just a powerful demonstration of force. A uh, simple answer is we, we, we don't know. We have no way to know. And it is futile to speculate from the, from the complete absence of evidence. However, several details recorded in the sources can be cautiously used uh, uh, to assess the background of the campaign and its outcomes. Namely, Russian chronicles state that Tula Buka's army suffered heavy casualties, but not Nogai's. Uh, then uh, activities of CKs were obviously directed against Tula Buka contingents in Northern Transylvania. And in the same year of 1285, at the end of that year, Nogi launched first major offensive against Byzantium, which is attested by Pachymeris, but also in several Western sources. And finally, Rashid Adin states that Nogi successfully devastated Majoristan, which is, of course, Hungary. So, <clears throat> so we have various scanty bits of evidence at our disposal showing that for Nogai, the campaign, the campaign of 1285 was not neither a defeat nor heavy blow that depleted his resources to a great extent. And I mentioned this because 
in uh, recent historiography, especially among Romanian scholars, Tudor Salajan is uh, the most obvious example. Uh, there is an opinion that the Tat second Tatar invasion was a great disaster for Nogai, which is obviously not true, but uh, older scholars uh, had totally opposite view that uh, Ladislas was even forced to become Nogai's puppet, which also has no basis in reality. So if uh, we need to assess the effects of the second invasion, uh, the mid stance between these two extremes is probably uh, the most uh, the most founded. Uh, now, I will uh, put to the to, to the last part of this uh, these presentations, namely uh, during the late 80s and early 90s of the 13th century, uh, the Tatar incursions took a different course. According to the documents from Vatican Archive, uh, the Hungarian borderlands were affected by these smaller Tatar incursions, where certain Neogeri or Nukers were also mentioned, and. Uh, uh, we also know that Hungarian political presence and influence in Oltenia or Western Wallachia, which uh, both Bela IV and uh, Ladislas IV tried to maintain, was completely extinguished. There is no mention of Sorini or Banat of Severin as Hungarian position after 1291. Uh, uh, and we also know that Nogi supported Bulgarian lords of Branicevo, Dorman and Kudelin, in their campaigns uh, in the Middle Danube against Serbian kings Dragutin and Milutin which clearly also indicate that whole Wallachian plains were under Nogi's control at the time. And uh, it is also not a coincidence that uh, in the beginning of the last decade of the 13th century, uh, Hungary nonetheless supported Serbs in their conflict against uh, Nogi's proteges. Uh, and in such a way, the Hungarian Tatar conflict continued on a different theater of, we may say, different front that is Northern Balkans and through the proxies, Bulgarians and, uh, and the Serbs. So. Uh, at the end, instead of, of the far-reaching conclusions, uh, uh, my, my idea was to underline some hitherto neglected aspects of the context characterized by the hostility between Kingdom of Hungary and Tatar world for uh, Hungarian colleagues and for those very familiar with Hungarian history of the 13th century, they will notice that I, for example, didn't deal with Bishopric of Milko or so-called Kuman Bishopric, which is a completely uh, different, uh, different issue, although in this uh, time, time frame. Uh, first, uh, I want to conclude that it was Nogai, so rather Nogai than the Golden Horde, which threatened Hungary during the last three decades of the 13th century, and which is important, important to know. Uh, then second, uh, in order to achieve uh, his goals, uh, Nogai used, as we have seen, uh, the proxies to, uh, in order to exert pressure on Hungary. So it is Lav Danilovic, there is a Kuman leader, enigmatic Oldemir, there are lords of Northwestern Bulgaria, Dorman and Kudelin, and probably the predecessor, or possibly the predecessor of Basarab of Balakia, so enigmatic figure of his father, Tokomeris, of whom we know nothing about, also comes, comes to mind. But um, uh, what is important to note, in order to subdue Hungarian political influence to the East of Carpathians, and probably for uh, the economic reasons that is plunder, the Tatars deliberately engaged in the smaller raids, low scale warfare, and strategy of exhaustion. Uh, especially after the invasion of 1285, uh, when they when they tested Hungarian strength and 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 defense, and as we have seen after the demise of Vladislav IV in 1290, the Hungarian influence in Western Wallachian plains uh, altogether disappeared. So we know that it was not the end of Nogi's ambition towards the west, as I have said, the theater moved uh, moved uh, to the Middle Danube, but it is probable. As uh, I think even Peter Jackson noted in his, uh, in his famous books about Mongols in Europe, the Tatars tested this uh, underbelly or probable penetration uh, from the south to, to, to the center of Hungary. And we know that uh, uh, Hungarian forces in the winter of 1291 and 92 successfully, uh, successfully defended against the Tatar attacks and they even managed to defeat Tatars in one or two skirmishes. Uh, we, we are not sure because we have two information from two different charters of Andrew III, but uh, it is dif difficult to say whether they are related to the same event or to, to, to uh, chronologically uh, close, uh, close events. Of, of course, we know that the conflict in the Northern Balkans eventually ended in 1293-94 after an agreement between Serbian King Milutin and uh, Nogay, and at that time, uh, uh, Nogay had to turn his attention towards these because the rupture in his relations with Tokta uh, already, already began. So 
these are some of the conclusions. Uh, naturally, uh, I will leave it to the written text that uh, the importance of the emergence of a Latin principality in the early 9th, 13th, in the beginning of the 14th century was in fact uh, the lasting legacy of Noga's era. And just for that, uh, I would like to point out one fact. Uh, usually in historiography, the people, the, 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 the scholars debated about the ethnic origin of the Basra dynasty, whether they were uh, Kumans, uh, whether they were Tatars or not. Of course, we know that the name Basra is of Kuman origin, which uh, by itself, uh, says uh, absolutely nothing. And even some researchers speculated that they may have been of Genghisid stock, which uh, I think Professor Vashari quite sufficiently explained in his book about the Kumans and the Tatars that it was not true because uh, things like these, I mean, uh, emergence from such uh, dignified stock would have been recorded in the sources. But irrespective of the origin uh, of Basra and his descendants, it is more important to know that during the 14th century, the relations between Basra the dynasty with the Tatars were not inimical. Rather, they relied on Tatar support on some occasion. And the stance of Valachia towards the Tatars during the 14th century is in sharp contrast with another Valachian principality, Moldavia, emerging in the mid 14th century under Hungarian auspices. So uh, this is uh, where I believe lies the lasting uh, legacy of uh, Nogi's involvement in the Lower Danube and uh, his clashes, uh, clashes with Hungary. More of which will be said in the written text. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>